hydration first welcome to another booktube video from me lauren from lauren in the books starting in bed and it's not a friday reading vlog starting in bed just before midnight on a thursday night um today you may well have guessed today this weekend in fact you may well have seen from the title of this video i'm attempting um to read for 24 hours in one weekend i've done this a few times uh, David loves it because I literally just neglect him the whole weekend. Sorry, David. It's all right. <laughs> um, and I'm going to read for 24 hours in one weekend. The weekend for me starts on a Friday. I don't work Fridays. Um, I don't work a m m traditional job, let's say. I do a lot of um, mid book tubing stuff on a Friday. But this weekend, I'm aiming to read. But just well, just don't don't mind David in the background. <laughs> just get ready for bed. <laughs> I'm aiming to read for 24 hours in one weekend. So that's roughly eight hours a day. So this is, I'm being a bit more generous to myself with mid timings than I normally am. Um, so eight hours a day, seems achievable, doesn't it? But it does mean that I need to fit in a solid eight hours a day in order to stay on track. The plans for the weekend aren't very many at all. Tomorrow, Friday, I'm getting my hair done in the morning. That does take about three hours and I can't read while that's going on because that's a bit rude. Um, and then my sister has, had, uh, has mentioned to me about visiting a farm um, with her and my niece in the afternoon. So that might be happening. So maybe it might be a bit of a struggle to get the eight hours in tomorrow. But Saturday and Sunday, no plans. Got to do my chores, but I can absolutely listen to audiobooks while that's going on. David's thinking of going to the... Um, going to the cinema on Saturday, aren't you, to watch yep. Mission Impossible. And he's also thinking about watching two Mission Impossible po Mission Impossible films on the telly, which will mean that I don't feel like I'm neglecting him too badly. The books I hear you cry. So you will know when I'm filming this, I'm filming this in the last weekend of July um, and I'm about to go into an, a month of reading Agatha Christie books and books inspired by Agatha Christie, about Agatha Christie, etc, etc. And I've got seven books here out from the library that I know if I don't get them read this weekend, then they're not getting read until September, if that, because I know a few of them have reservations on and need to go back. So seven books here from the library. I'm not, can she bring them over with me? I'm dropping them, oh my God. I'm not saying I'm gonna read all seven of these, but I'm definitely gonna have a good go at it. So here's the seven. The po This Poison Heart by Kaylin Bayron. Busy Being Free, Starting Again on Your Own by Emma Forrest. Babysitter by Joyce Carol Oates. Small World by Caleb Azuma Nelson. A House for Alice by Diana Evans. Happy Place by Emily Henry. And The Poppy War by R.F. Quang. So quite the range of books and stuff there. And like I said, I'm under no illusion that I'm gonna get all of these done but this is the pile that I'm gonna be targeting, library books, and in particular, Happy Place by Emily Henry, because that's due back on Monday. <laughs> so that, that will definitely be getting read, or at least started, and then we'll see how we go with the rest of it. So when I've done these videos before, I do tend to read quite a lot, because it's 24 hours and I'm dedicating a lot of time to just reading, and there's also gonna be some audio booking going on as well, again, using my Libby app. So I've got, I'm um, three quarters of the way through, She's gonna have to put these down somewhere because they're gonna fall off otherwise. I'm three quarters of the way through uh, a dragon, a dragonfly in amber. <laughs> I always forget what it's called. It is actually called a dragonfly in amber by Diana Gabaldon, which is the second book in the um, in the Outlander series. Oh, I'm seventy one percent through, so I've got. She waits. Eleven hours and fourteen minutes is a long, long audio book. It's thirty eight hours long. Um, and I'm gonna start listening to that on 1.25 um, when I wake up in the morning. And then I've got a few other things to go to, but we'll we'll look at those later on once I finish that. So that also means that doing audiobook stuff means that I'm able to do stuff. So it's not just pure sitting down and reading. So I'm gonna be doing my chores. I'm gonna be doing, I might do a bit of painting. I keep saying I want to get my paints out. Um, I'm gonna go for a walk, etc., etc. Things that I can do with me, need to paint my nails. Oh, I might do that with the, um, the hairdressers though but yeah so that's the plan and as i said I, i'm gonna start with happy place by emily henry because this is the one that's due back on monday i've read nothing by emily henry emily henry is the author of um a few of these women's contemporary fiction books book lovers is that one of them i wish i could find 
There's literally no... I thought there'd be a list of her books in here. There's not. I'm sure Book Lovers is another one of hers. Oh, here we go. Beach Read. You, you and Me on Vacation and Book Lovers. I mean, very good front covers, aren't they? And this is the most recent one. This was out this year, 2023. And yeah, so I'm going to start with this. Seems like a perfect summer read, doesn't it? See how we get on. And do that, but David's not gonna be awake for this whole time. He's got to work tomorrow, so he's gonna to want to go to sleep soon. So I did say I'm gonna try and read for an hour, but I think whatever I manage to chip into it, I will be pleased with. So it doesn't necessarily have to be an hour. I'll be pleased whatever's going on. So here we go. Here we go. David's gone to sleep, so I've got to be really quiet. But here we actually go. It's one minute past midnight. And we're gonna go for it now. I had planned. I had planned to read for an hour. But I think I'm just gonna go for as long as I can, which may literally be 15 minutes, but just to be able to chip into it a little bit is enough to excite me, so. Let's go. Happy place. Knott's Harbour, Maine. A cottage on the rocky shoreline with knotty pine floorboards and windows that are nearly always open. So I read two chapters for 18 minutes. But I am very tired. So I'm glad I've made a little start. But tomorrow is when it'll really happen. See you in the morning for a proper chat about it all. Nine, nine. Good morning. Welcome to actual Friday. Last night was nighttime Friday. David was sleeping, weren't you, David? Was I snoozing? You were snoozing. Was David, snoring? Look at David in the bottom, bottom right-hand corner of us. Very cute. Um, yeah, so it's ten past eight. Woke up at quarter to eight. And I've had a ten-minute read so far. I think my husband's about to go make me a cup of tea. <laughs> Is he? No. Oh. He's laid down. Will he though? In a bit. I'm quite comfy. I'm comfy too. Mm. And I've got lots of reading to do. I've got work to do. I suppose I could go and make a cup of tea and listen to an audiobook well, while I'm making a, a cup of tea. I'll make one in a little while. I'm just well, not quite ready The thing is, is that I've got to go to the hairdressers at nine. Oh, have you? Yeah. Well, you could have quiet. Well, <laughs> Look at the state of my roots, they definitely, they, and, and my hair's just so dry. What are you there for? It, well, however long it takes, normally about three hours, oh, isn't okay. it? So, yeah, I'll be there. You're going to miss the England game. Oh, I know, sad. England versus? Uh, Denmark. Denmark. Denmark today. Um, but yeah, so I've, I couldn't talk really about this last night, so I've now read... 38 pages of Happy Place. Is that because of me you couldn't talk yeah, about? Yeah, because I was whispering. Oh, you could have spoken. Um, and it's quite enjoyable. It's about a girl, Harriet, um, and her visiting her happy place, um, which is um, with all of her friends on holiday in this cottage. It sounds like a massive house. Um, and her and her partner, who's also part of this friendship group, they've broken up. Um, and the plan was that they were going to tell um, the friendship group this time but it's the last time that they're all going to be together in this um, cottage that they've been holidaying for ages and a couple of their friends are getting married. So now they're in a position where they don't want to be the sort of vibe ruiners. Um, and yeah, and it's just flashback to her, Harriet and Wynn meeting one another. Um, I do always like it. This is an American book and it talks about her. Um, it's by an American author and it talks about her going to, um, to London. Do you want to listen to this? I like it when you hear about people visiting London from an American's point of view. Yeah, okay. Because, truth be told, a lot of London is a shit hole. <laughs> but, <laughs> but everything sounds wonderful. So here we go. The city is gorgeous, of course. All that old stone and ivy blend blending seamlessly into sleek steel and glass. And thanks to the last semester, I'm more prepared than ever to socialise with strangers. 
More, most nights, at least a handful of people from the study abroad programme go out for pints in one of Westminster's endless supply of pubs or grab crispy fish and chips wrapped in newspaper and eat it as we walk along the Thames. On weekends, there are champagne picnics in sprawling what gardens. This is very poppins. And day trips to art galleries. Hours of browsing as many iconic bookshops as possible, foils and daunt books, as well as a whole slew of others on Cecil Court. <laughs> so I do like that. When people talk about a London from a sort of romantic point of view, I mean, they don't talk me... about all the sort of like um, uh, spit <laughs> and the busyness yeah. of it and so the uh, the, the greyness of it. And is yeah. Westminster full of pubs? I don't think Westminster is full of pubs. No, but yeah, Westminster sounds lovely though, doesn't it? The word Westminster. It think, does. Oh, Westminster. Oh, I'd love to go there. Oh, loads of pubs where I can have a pint. Um, but yeah, I'm enjoying it. So it's, um, but we've, we've headed back to real life now. And I don't think you can legally, I don't think you can have a fish and chips in newspaper anymore because of like ink and stuff. Yeah, but it sounds good though, doesn't it, in the book? <laughs> <laughs> so as I said, I'm off to the hairdressers at nine. Um, I'm going to drive around there and listen to an audiobook on the way there, on the way back. There might be an opportunity. What are you doing? I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just listening. <laughs> oh, we're dancing. Um, and yeah, I might have a little opportunity, opportunity for a little read while I'm around there, maybe while the hair dies on, but not a proper read. Um, and then we get back, and as I said, I may well be going to the zoo today. No, not the zoo, the farm today, with my sister and my niece. My sister went to see Barbie last night and she really enjoyed it, so I'm looking forward to talking to her about that. What are you doing with that hand, David? I listened to some music. He was listening like this. Anyway, less talking, more reading. I'm going to go and listen to my audiobook and make David and I a cup of tea. Yeah. She's off to the hairdressers with this lovely angle. It's actually quite warm out. It's possible. Shh. It was late showers, we'll probably... Shh. <laughs> so the hairdressers is literally a five minute drive away. But never being one to miss an opportunity to listen to some more audiobook and get some more hours in. The only thing I'm doing is, if you've watched one of these videos before, you'll see that halfway through, I've reset the timer. <laughs> so I've got a double whammy of timers, whereas I've got the timer on my phone, which is showing, by the way, one hour and three minutes. But I'm also writing it in my book because I'm so frightened of this failing, like me resetting it like I did last time. So... Off we go to the hairdressers. Next time you see me, I'll be looking beautiful and ready to go. Right, get the audio book on. I'm really pleased because the plan was to get over one hour before I left and I did, one hour three. Right, bye. Don't get me wrong. I'm enjoying the low temperatures, but this fake autumn we're having, it's quite miserable, isn't it? I quite like to see a little bit of sun, not the heat, just the sunlight. But um, it's very grey every day, isn't it? Anyway, I'm back from the hairdressers. As always, she's done a lovely job, hasn't she? She's just done a lovely job. I only had a little tiny bit taken off the ends, but it was looking like pretty rank, so I'm pleased. And this ginger sort of fades to a nice ginger. We're at one hour seven. One hour twelve! One hour twelve. Which I was thinking, oh, that's not that good. But then... Ordinarily, when I've done these, as, as I'm doing this, I'm going to start taking washing off of the washing lines, off of the, because we haven't been able to put any washing out because it's been raining. Um, yeah, as, um, when I normally do these, when I normally do, well, I say normally, I think I've done them like four times before, when I do reading for 24 hours in one weekend, it normally starts when I finish work on a Friday. I haven't done one of these since I no longer work on a Fridays. So we've started early already. So we're already ahead of schedule. Now, I am going to the farm with my niece and my sister at 20 to 2. So I'm home now, going to finish up folding up the washing. Look at these Barbie trousers. My friend Emma bought them and uh, they don't fit her, so she's passed them on to me. They're amazing. I'm going to wear those tomorrow. Um, so I'm going to finish off getting in the washing. Then I'm going to make myself some scambled egg on toast. Oh, this isn't all dry actually. To leave a few bits on the light. It smells lovely though. Uh, yeah, then I'm gonna have some scrambled egg on toast. Read. So whilst I'm getting the washing in, I'll carry on listening to the audiobook. Then I'm gonna read some more of Happy Place, um, which I'm quite enjoying, whilst eating my scrambled egg. 
and we'll continue continue and I'd like to be up to over two hours I mean two hours two and a half hours would be nice before I go out I don't think I'm gonna be out too long oh by the way look at this top I bought second hand online on Depop um, I thought it was very Agatha Christie so I'm gonna wear it at some point during Agatha Christie month just something I don't know it just feels a bit Agatha knit and the flowers and the sort of feels a bit vintagey so I'll be wearing that at some point but anyway let's chat in more talk it uh, let's chat in more talking let's chat in more um audiobook in my audiobook as I said it's the second in the series of the Outlander series um what I enjoy this it's very difficult with this series because I really wanted to read a series this year um uh and there's parts of the series that I really like. So it's following a woman called Claire Randall who is um, on honeymoon, uh, on a second honeymoon in Scotland in the 1940s with her husband. And she gets whipped back to 1700s um, Scotland and England and France actually as well. She's visiting all over the place. Um, and there's parts of that I love because I really like Claire and I like her, I like the concept of her using what knowledge she has of the future to sort of, help the people in the 1700s so at the moment they're going for this big thing where they're like planting potatoes because she knows that potatoes will be really helpful in Scotland and using like a little bit of history to to know what's happening and things like that and she's also had vaccinations so she can uh, in in a like real life in uh, the 40, uh, in the 1940s so she's not getting all the sicknesses that other people are getting and she's using her medical knowledge so I love all of that stuff but the stuff I like less is the romance side of things, which is essentially what the book is. The book is a romance book between Claire and Jamie, um, who is someone that she is married to in the 1700s. And like I said, there, when I've mentioned this book and this series before, there's lots in there about um, domestic violence and stuff like that, because that was much more socially acceptable in those terms, which is fine. I'm happy to read a book about that and how it's more socially acceptable. But what I don't like is how it's sort of like romanticized a bit and like a, as like a cheeky little personality quirk. Um, and those bits I like less. There has been less of that, this book, compared to the first book. Um, but yeah, I'm still measuring it out whether or not I'm going to continue fully with the series. I'm definitely going to finish this audiobook and then I've bought the third one, which I think is called Voyager. So I think I will read that and then we'll see where we're at after that. So anyway more listening and less filming let's go get the audiobook on and let's get some washing done imagine had he mentioned welly to paul washing. before he said looking abstractedly at one of the tilted stones nearby when your brother and the babe died of the pox that was the first time since she left leon since she went my father ready to go to the farm almost ready we'll be ready once i've got the the bag on oh i need to do a bottle of water as well <sighs> there's some dark clouds out there but i don't know if it's going to rain I and i was sharing a waterproof with my cousin laura who's currently on holiday <laughs> so she's taken the the waterproof with her it's her waterproof when i say sharing i mean i borrowed it from her um yeah, so off to the off to the farm now. No more reading for a few hours, but guys, I'm on two hours twenty-three, so that's much better than I thought I would be on. Um, my sister's picking me up; she's late for everything, so there is every chance that I could get to two hours thirty anyway. So I'm just gonna have a little potter while I'm waiting, um, and then we're off to the farm, and I'll show you a few bits, hopefully. You have got to open. You'll be safe. Oh, the cat! Where? Do you think the cat? She said she's had kittens. She's probably on Instagram. No. Oh, you should do that. Oh, Thank you. 
Well, it was a lovely, lovely time at the at the farm and then to the farm shop afterwards. That's the towel. We've been doing some washing here today. But I've only done two hours and 28 minutes of reading and it's now 20 to five. The bee's here. My niece stopped here and we had a little cake and a cup of tea. And she's got a little cube of stuff that she plays with, which is very cute. It's got books in it and some colouring and this bee. But they've just left and now it is time for reading so i'm going to crack more on with happy place by emily henry um oh david's talking to him out the window and um because tonight david and i are watching a film and having a takeaway pizza we all did takeaway pizza for my dad's birthday a couple of weeks ago and they hadn't put one of my toppings on and david had asked for barbecue sauce on his and they just squeezed it in one big spot and had like one slice that was just pure barbecue and none barbecue of the rest david just said to him it hasn't happened and they said okay i have a free pizza which we weren't expecting so we've got a pizza tonight um and we're gonna watch a film either the lost king or the woman king so one of those but anyway look i can't keep talking i've got to get on let's go starting at 1640 in pink oh i've been pottering I've been reading and I've been pottering and I'm now up to four hours and 25. I'm 118 pages. That was quite loud, wasn't it? Uncle Bryn, that was. <laughs> Uncle Bryn. <laughs> the Nocky! <laughs> um, I'm 118 pages into this. I'm quite enjoying it. What I will say, right, with these romance novels, David, I don't think you've ever read a romance novel, have you? He bought himself one to read on the holiday and he didn't. Icebreaker. Quite often, yeah. they have a sort of like... Friend, uh, enemies to lovers or, or friends to lovers sort of trope. This is a bit of a reverse of that because these are people that were in a relationship who have broken up but are on holiday with their friends and it's their wedding and they don't want to spoil anything so they're thinking we'll just pretend we're in a relationship until the end. But one of the main things that happens in most romance books that I read is that two people are forced to share a bed together and I think I would love to read a romance book where p two people opt to share a bed together rather than forcing to share a bed together because it's something that really makes me think so yeah but i'm enjoying it i'm enjoying um it's very sort of readable and um yeah the the people seem quite nice there's one person in it i feel like i'm a little bit annoyed by kimmy if i'm allowed to be um and then i'm also been listening to um a dragonfly in amber um and i've got seven and a half hours left of that and I'm 80% through so I actually thought I would finish that today but that's not going to happen because there's not seven and a half hours left of the day <laughs> um, despite me listening to it on uh, 1.25 so I thought a book would be finished today but a book will not be finished today um, but I'm going to carry on now the plan for the evening is David's just ordering us a pizza are you doing it now um, and then we're going to watch either The Woman King or The Lost King are you no, leaving we're watching the Dolly Parton film. Oh, we decided, did we? Yeah, we did, we agreed. Okay, we're yeah. going to watch the Dolly Parton film called Something in I Red. I can't remember what it was called now. The Woman in Red or something like that. About a Dolly Parton um, impersonator. Yeah. Uh, and it came out last year, it's on Sky Movies this week. So we're going to watch that. I didn't realise we'd agreed to that. We did. Um, so we're going to do that. And then, and eat the pizza. And then I think the I'll have a bath. And read some more. And... Yeah, we'll just see how we go. So, in an ideal world, guys, I would have loved to have done eight hours today, eight hours tomorrow, and eight hours Saturday. But I think Saturday and Sunday were always going to be the big reading days for me. So, I'm already four hours 25 in. So, even if I did no more reading today, which isn't going to happen, more I'm literally about to pick up my book now while, we, while David orders the pizza and we wait for it to arrive. Um, it would mean I've got 10 hours to do tomorrow and 10 hours to do on Sunday. So, I'll keep chipping in. I'd like to be at six hours when I go to bed, over six hours. Um, and I don't feel that tired at the moment, although after the pizza, I bet I'm absolutely drowsing. But yeah, and tomorrow's gonna be a big audiobook sesh because it's chores day tomorrow, isn't it, David? 
David's yes. quite looking forward to um, clearing out the fridge. <laughs> Are you not going to do the freezer now that we might be having that barbecue? No, what I'm going to do is, if we're having the barbecue next week, when we take the cake out, yeah. I will do it next week. Whatever day the barbecue is on, I will do it the day before. The, but you're going to clear the you're going to. But I'm clearing the fridge, the fridge tomorrow. Clearing the fridge out tomorrow. Um, cool. So it's Chores Day tomorrow. So yeah. So there'll be a lot of audiobook listening and doing stuff like that. So yeah, I will definitely finish a Dragonfly and Amber tomorrow, and then I've got a few books to pick from. Don't know which one to go for actually. Well, anyway, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. But more reading will be happening now. I'm going back to Happy Place, my Happy Place, and the book Happy Place. We're on four hours 25. I'm writing this down as well as doing this because I'm so frightened I'll reset it. Let's go. 1905. <laughs> well, but turn it off, David! <laughs> Bolt it! Um, both the film and the pizza was delicious. I've just remembered I've got a slice of pizza there. You have. Um, <laughs> um, both the, the film was great. I really enjoyed it. Uh, did you enjoy it? I did enjoy it. Yeah, though. I really enjoyed it. Um, and... I'm gonna now gonna go and get in the bath, read for a little bit more because that's what it's all about. And um, yeah, I really enjoyed that film a lot. Seriously, Red it was called. Good. It's on Sky Cinema at the moment, and it was a mere 94 minutes. I'm trying to watch 100 films this year, 100 new to me films. I tried it last year, didn't achieve it. Tried it the year before, did achieve it, but I only just got 100. I've just watched, that was my 38th new to me film this year. David, how many new to me films have you watched? 72. David's watched over, no, you've watched almost double what I've watched. Yeah. He does like to get down to that cinema. And tomorrow he's going to be watching three more new to him films. Well, over the weekend. Over the weekend. Yeah, but I think maybe just two at the cinema and then, well, maybe Lovely. one more here. Right, so, I'm going to go get the shower, bath, take my contact lenses out, beep, 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 beep. And read and my husband's going to make me a cup of tea to bring to the bath isn't he? You can do that. Well the good news, I mean the bath was lovely may I just, may I just say. The good news is, is it's, you can't see what time it is, it's just gone ten, it's not even ten o'clock yet. I'm not feeling that tired and I've done five hours 37 reading, I read for quite a long time in the bath, for 43 minutes in fact in the bath. Just putting a bit of moisturiser on, I've been using this water cream from the inky list which is literally like putting water on your face and very hydrating been very much into it i'll show you again because somebody asked me recently about what moisturizer i've been using this guy water cream um so yeah so i read for 43 minutes in the bath which was lovely and now it's just 10 o'clock and i'm not even that tired and i said i wanted to be on um, the dream was to be on eight hours but I knew that wasn't going to happen but I'm going to be on over six hours which means that I've got roughly nine hours to do tomorrow and Sunday Sunday I have my Patreon book club in the evening and I need to spend about an hour during the day on that writing some questions and stuff like that take this off now um, and then the book club itself is normally about an hour and a half so that's two and a half hours sort of right off on Sunday which is great because I love doing it and it's bookish um, but yeah so I need to maybe factor in doing like 10 tomorrow I mean like I said I'm probably gonna do over six today I think I'm just gonna go and sit David's playing some computer games so I think I'm just gonna go and sit with David for a bit and read a bit more happy place am I halfway through this yet no 198 oh no I am halfway through because it's 300 and 385 so I am over halfway through this now and I'm aware I can't tell you much of the plot of Dragonfly and Amber because it's a sequel and I always make an effort not to this is what it looks like to not give the plots away um, but I've got 7 hours and 15 minutes left of that something's just happened which has made me feel a bit ugh, ick in terms of sexual assault and again the romanticization of that romanticization romanticizing is I think what I meant to say I got these <laughs> many years ago from ASOS I got one in this color and one in a brown color and they've been so good but they are absolutely falling to bits <laughs> um, the velcro is almost gone 
but I have had them for many years and they're so easy for doing makeup stuff because you don't have to like put it over your head you can just wrap it I might put another couple of these on my birthday or Christmas list because they are falling to bits and no matter how much I wash them they still got makeup and stuff on them anyway let's go get my glasses and go out there and do a little bit more reading so I've done six hours 14 it's 11 o'clock I'm gonna go and brush my teeth have my last wee of the night and then come back read for a little bit longer I mean I think tops we're gonna get to six and a half hours but maybe not even that but please David He's just watching TikTok. Tell me exactly what TikTok you're watching I'm now. I'm watching TikTok. Oh. I'm just scrolling. I just wanted to get get an idea of your oh. sort of algorithm for TikTok. Okay, let me open up TikTok. What's the, fir what's the TikTok that David, the first TikTok that comes to David? This will give a little insight into your character. Um, so it's a follow-up from a TikTok I was watching the other day. Yeah, what is follow it? Them about a guy who um, was on a motorbike and he's got like a mic on it and he drove past a crash. A guy had just been hit by a car on a bike, he was all right. And this is part, this is the second part. There we go. Get over to TikTok, guys. I don't use TikTok at all, but the only thing I've ever used TikTok for is to look up um, little montages of Trixie and Matthew from Call the Midwife. <laughs> and um, cleaning tips. Anyway, as I said, more, a little bit more reading. Pleased to be on six and a half hours. Wake up in the morning, get on with it. Nine hours tomorrow, at least nine hours tomorrow. But a whole day of it. Anyway, let's go and brush my teeth. Let's go, take this with me to brush my teeth. Of course I am. Good morning and happy Saturday to you and those who celebrate. Um, it's Saturday, I've had a bit of a lay in, <laughs> which wasn't planned. But um, yeah, it's happened. It's 9.17. So I hadn't planned to do this, but here we are on Saturday the 29th of July. And we're gonna do a little bit more reading. So David's just making me a cup of tea. I'm gonna drink that and have a cup of tea in bed. And then it's chores day. Now, David, has set himself the task, although he's just told me he's not even sure he's doing it, of watching, I think, three or four Mission Impossible films today, so we can go and watch the new Mission Impossible tomorrow. But he's also just told me that he finds Mission Impossible films very cringe, so he doesn't know if he's going to even do it. So he is well, he's entertained for today. We're gonna, I'm going to have my cup of tea, then I'm going to make some breakfast. I bought a few breakfasty bits in the farm shop yesterday. I bought an avocado, some onions some tomato no we've already got spring onions some mushrooms some tomatoes um we've got some nice bread and i'm going to do some sort of like breakfasty thing and then we'll do chores i'm also going to do a bit of clothes sorting out today because david bought back the clothes from um the summer clothes so i'm going to get those and do that today as well so there's gonna be a lot of listening to audiobooks that's why i'm kicking off with this now and yeah, I wanted to get, I'd like to get to 18 hours today. Oh, I don't know if that's possible. No, it's not. That'll be 11 and a half hours. Let's see how I get on until lunch and then we'll see how many hours we're do. But I've got to stop talking and I've got to start reading. So here we go. It's 9.19 now. Let us begin we've just got to seven hours and five minutes at 10 to 10 and i'm going to make david and i some breakfast so <laughs> i don't know what i'm going to do but i'm going to try and make this as breakfasty as possible i've got some lovely tomatoes i bought yesterday but accidentally put them in the fridge instead of leaving them out because i don't like tomatoes in the fridge because they're too hard leftover spring onions tin of beans an avocado david won't eat the avocado Three big mushrooms, some leftover mashed potato from earlier on in the week. Eggs, I think I'm gonna do eggy bread. 
and then bread. So yeah, so I think I'll just cook the mushrooms. I've got an onion as well, I think. Onion. I don't think I have got an onion. No, I could do the spring onions. I could do a sort of like onion potato cake with some eggy bread, tomatoes, avocado, beans. David. David. I think he's got his headphones on. Let's go find out. Let's go find out. David. Yeah. Breakfast. Breakfast. We've got mashed potato. I was going to mix it with the spring onions and make some sort of like oniony mashed potato cakes. Beans. Avocado. You probably don't want any of that. Mushrooms. I was just going to cook them whole. Tomatoes. And I was going to do eggy bread. I'll just have an egg. You don't want eggy bread. He has just had two slices of toast. So another slice might push you over the edge. Yeah. Okay, I cool. I don't think I need any more bread. I'll do that then. Sounds lovely. Yeah, it's just a sort of like, let's make some breakfast out of what we've got. Let's make some breakfast out of what we got. What about the pizza slice? Will you chop that up and... Oh, we'll have that bit later on. <laughs> um, how's Mission Impossible 3? Yeah, it's fine. I don't know. Don't force yourself through it. I mean, you're 56 minutes through it. I know. Have you still got two hours five left, or is that how long it is? That's oh, no. That's how long it is. So you're almost halfway through. Yeah, and like Philip Seymour Hoffman, you know, the strawberry blonde fella from... From Patch uh, Adams. From Patch Adams. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and he's very good. But yeah, I don't know. I just... I think I'm going to stop. Okay. I'll, 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 Find I'm, something else to watch. I'm definitely forcing myself to watch this. Oh, don't force yourself to do anything, no, David. I don't think I'm going to go and watch the right. new one then. I'm going to go make breakfast then. Say good luck, David. Good luck! Head, not enough body. Yeah, too much body. <laughs> um, David has given up on 
um, Mission Impossible. Yeah, it is a, it was, mission, it was impossible a mission Impossible to watch the movies. Yeah, I can't be bothered. Do you mind if I just took a little no, bit? You can have a little bit, you can have a tiny bit. I've, um, I've read for 8 hours 22 so far, Ooh, which is very good. Um, yeah, I'm feeling pleased <laughs> with that. But now it's time for chores. David's going to clean out the fridge. He's going to do the kitchen chores. You're going to do your other chores, which are hoovering. Yeah, through. a bit of hoovering, a bit of polishing. A bit of polishing. Just a bit of, you know. I'm going to clean the radiator. Radiators. Radiators and do the skirting boards in the hallway and in here. Nice. I'm also going to do a load of washing. Because I'll wash in baskets. Oh, yeah, it's got big in it. Chock a blocker. And a few other things. <laughs> so yeah, so that's a lot of audiobook listening to. What do you do when you're doing your chores? David? Oh, I'll be music in it. What sort of music? Um, don't know. Probably a range. Give us one of your songs that you'll be listening to. Uh, probably ACDC. Oh, does that get you pumped for cleaning? Well, it's an, it's a song that I'd never heard of theirs before. That was used on the Bear season two. Oh, and didn't he love episode. the Bear season two episode? Loved it. Bear episode. season two episode. <laughs> uh, episode. Eight, I think, or nine. Episode. You'll find it. <laughs> yeah, it was like it, it was. It's called "If You Want Blood." Oh dear. And, uh, that sounds a bit scary. No, it, no, it's not. It's a very good song. No, it's not. And it was used. It's not scary. It's not scary. It was used very well. Cool. And you know, I love a bit of song that's utilised well in a movie or a TV show. Didn't he? Because songs that I never even cared of, all of a sudden, become my favourites. Become my favourite. <laughs> <laughs> right. So let's go. So I've got 5 hours and 45 minutes of my audiobook left. I am listening to it on 1.5. Um, <laughs> I'm keep my eyes out. I'm like... <laughs> go and get in there and get ACDC no, on. No, I need to get some. And, get uh, yeah, let's see how, how things are after... Chortles. Chortles. Let's go. Where did lay across his chest and held it tightly? I have to be... David, I've got you two. Oh, God, David, you've got two. Fat like a princess. Yeah. We've been working very hard. David's just done an absolute number on the fridge. And here it comes. I've been using this app called Sweepy to track my cleaning and I'm absolutely obsessed with it and it's really good incentive for cleaning. I'm gonna make a whole I'm gonna make a whole video about it. Right, so here we go. Clean fridge. Go into it and done. Don't need to do that again for another three months. Nice. Seems so fair. Have you done anything else in there? Uh, no. Well, no. I'm just about to clean the cupboard under the sink. That, that counts as a cupboard. We, I'm, I'm trying to get through the yeah, cupboard, but I'm doing it once every. Let's have a look. Organise. And then I just do a bit of normal chorage. Yeah. And I'm going to get a shower. Yeah, I'm just going to clean out under that sink, take out all everything, all the gusto's packed well done. away. We'll have to pick something to have for dinner tonight. Did any of them take your fancy? There's a few There's of them. There's three pastas really nice. in there, so yeah, maybe we should have a pasta. pastas are really good. <laughs> we'll show you later. When the we'll avocado looks pretty funky. Yeah, the avocado looks nice, doesn't it? I mean, it doesn't look nice to me because I don't like avocado. Should have known. <laughs> don't even ask. Don't even say it. Don't even say it. Um, I've still got skirting boards to do in here. And then I can get on to actual chores, but chores. we'll keep going until we'll just keep on one of us lose the will to live. We've always got tomorrow to do chores if we don't want to do um, chores all weekend. Today. The chores, some of the chores we're doing today aren't chores that we would do no. every weekend anyway. So I'm no. only doing these skirting boards every five months, yeah. guys. I've been, I've been meaning time. to do the um, the cupboard under the sink for ages anyway. Do you so. feel like it does make a difference doing the skirting boards? Well. The they only problem with ours in. is that yeah, ours is quite 
scuffy anyway. They need painting. Yeah. But I mean, I don't know if that's worth... It smells nice at least. Yeah, it does. Yeah. I've got a really sore throat because there's just so much dust everywhere because I've been doing the backs of radio. And I don't know if doing the skirting board, because I mean, I'm not really a hands-on kind of girl when it comes to this sort of thing. Mm. If it's worth doing the skirting before new carpet or after new carpet, because we're doing the skirting. We'll ask my father, he knows that sort of thing. Exactly. I've already I've texted my father to say, can he come around? One of our radiators is hanging off the wall, the hallway one, yeah, so. And and we've got a leaky, t well, leaky-ish. Oh yeah, he can do that. I'll tell him to bring his tool bag, David. Yeah. Anyway, let's enjoy our tea in each other's company while I'm not reading for one moment. Oh, how's the reading going? Nine hours 38 I've done. Nice, so what have you still got? 14 hours. 14 hours, hours yeah. But if I do seven hours today and seven hours tomorrow. That's all? Yeah. Seven easy, hours today, seven hours tomorrow. It is, cleaning is a good job to do when you're listening to audiobooks. Although I've got to say, I feel like Swift. I'm not. Is that what you were listening to? I bet it's because um, he listens to it in the bear. And he gets all emotional over it. So, I mean, that's all it takes, as um, I said earlier. I feel like I haven't been paying as much attention to my audiobook because I've been deep in the cleaning. My glasses are filthy. I tell you what, well. though, I wish I would have applied for tickets to see Taylor, though. Oh, really? I think I'd enjoy seeing her. Okay. Um, but the reading. Good um, tunes. Good tunes. Um, <laughs> um, I don't feel like I've been paying as much attention to my book, and I feel like that's telling of the book as well, isn't it? So maybe well, I won't continue. Book. Yeah, maybe I won't continue. Yeah, but the I mean, when you get cleaning, though, you you turn into a different woman. Tunnel vision. Only well, recently. Past, yeah, only in, only in the last two weeks. weeks. No, twenty days because I've done oh, two. Twenty days. I've done two ten. This is my. This is the third week of it. So this oh, is week. You should have said I would have got you a card or something. You could have got me. Keep saying I want the little cleaning caddy, don't I? Yeah. Put my exactly cleaning products in. All yeah. right. Anyway, bye. Just before I um put the dishwasher on. Oh. Wow. And I've just emptied the dishwasher. I'm just eating last night's pizza, the one slice I didn't eat. I wish I'd saved a slice. It looks bloody lovely. Oh, jam is it somewhere? Oh, you, did not, you did pull back a bit then. Well, I, I thought you can penetrate. Um, so yeah, the kitchen. The focus areas have been the kitchen, lounge, and hallway today. And we've done some washing. Mm. We've both had enough. We've been going at it for three hours. Three and a half hours. That'll My do. back is killing me. So, I think I'm gonna go and have a, um, I'm gonna go and have a daytime bath. A daytime summer bath. Do you want a daytime bath? It won't be hot, David. No, all right then, I'll wait for you to, and I'll jump in after you. Um, and do some more reading. There's a high chance I could even finish that. The stuffed crust is nice, isn't it? I always get the stuffed crust. I would never opt for it, but it is nice. It's the best. Is it much more expensive? Uh, I think it's an extra like three quid. Mm -hmm. But like, that is nice. that's probably the whole round of pizza. That's probably a block of like mozzarella. Mm -hmm. Obviously, no, I'm getting confused with Palooza that. Mm -hmm. I mean, they have to up it a little bit, don't they? Extra work. Right, so I'm going to go and get the bath. There's a high chance that I could finish my book while I'm in there, my reading book. I've got just under three hours left of Dragonfly and Amber. I need to paint my nails again because I only painted them yesterday when I was at the hairdressers and look, they're already chipped where I've been cleaning so much. But next time you see me, I'll be lovely and clean and that'll be clean like my home. I've read for 11 hours and 18 minutes and I'm dressed like um, uh, Army Spice. <laughs> or um, army barbie maybe um, yeah had a lovely bath finished happy place by Emily Henry I quite liked it there was parts of it I was a bit like Pfft. I think whenever you read a romance or probably romance is that whenever you read a romance you have to sort of suspend disbelief a few times don't you and there was moments in here where the couple that we follow I quite enjoyed the sort of like will they won't they get back together aspect of it I don't think I've read a romance like that before where we're there's, there's an established couple and they're broken up and are they going to get back together so that was fresh and new um but and, and I enjoyed the the aspects about friendship because they were within a friendship group but by the end when it got to sort of like the revelations of the fact that they were broken up and how annoyed with them all their friends were whereas I'd be like 
this is completely your business. Like it, it felt like their breakup was as much involved with their friends as it was with, the, it, it wasn't a personal thing for them. It was their friends as well. And I found that a bit sort of uh, perplexing, but yeah, it ended on a lovely note as I'm sure these things do often. And yeah, I enjoyed it. I will go to more of these, I think. Um, they're very sort of like readable books. Beach Read, You and Me on Vacation and Book Lovers. Maybe I'll go for Book Lovers next, but yeah, there we go. Enjoyed. So, and also I've now got to a point in the book and I can't tell you what point in the book I'm at because it's a really big spoiler, but something sort of big has just happened in uh, uh, Dragonfly in Amber. I've got two hours and five minutes left and I'm listening to that on 1.5. So yeah, just over an hour of that left to go. Um, but now I'm gonna pick another book from the stack of library books um and i've already picked my next um audiobook i'm going to listen to i'm next going to listen to um let's find it how to disappear by gillian McAllister. um this is one that my colleagues recommended to me um and i'm quite in the mood for a sort of like thriller page turner thing whether or not I actually do it today, but I'm going to sort out my summer wardrobe at some point. I might do it this afternoon and start listening to that or finish listening to the Dragonfly and Amber. But I think that would be quite a good thing. I'm, I'm into listening to like a, an audiobook that I can't stop listening to. Um, and I might go for a walk tomorrow and listen to some more of that. So that's next. So with that in mind, um, I'm not going to read Babysitter next because this is a thriller and I feel like I should only really have what my brain can only take one sort of like thriller at one point. So I do want to read this and this has got lots of reservations on. So if I do manage to get through that audiobook, then this is the next one I'll pick up. So, but I, I want to read that audiobook more. Then I've got Busy Being Free, Starting On Your Own Again by Emma Forrest. This Poison Heart by Kaylin Byron. Small Worlds by Kaylee Bazuma Nelson. Now I read Open Water and found it a bit slow and I wonder if I might feel the same about that because a few people said, oh, that's almost exactly the same as Open Water. So maybe that's a no as well. A House for Alice, this I've had for a while and I loved um, Ordinary People. Another book by Diana Evans, so that's a potential. And then also I really wanna get into this series which is RF Quang's series, The Poppy War. Um, this is the first in a, a trilogy. I didn't realise they'd be quite this big, actually. Um, so, yeah, so I think we're looking at these two. And then if I manage to get through that thriller, this one as well. What do I want to go for? The House for Alice or the Poppy War? I mean, should we look at the first lines and see if we can decide that way? Or the blurbs? Let's read the blurbs and then we'll read the first line. So this is the blurb of... The Poppy War by R.F. Quang. Opium runs through the heart of the Nicara Empire, a constant reminder of the war with the Federation of Mugen that brought it to the Empire's shore. A war that only ended thanks to three heroes, the Vipress, the Dragon Emperor and the Gatekeeper, known as the Trifecta. They were legendary figures, each bestowed with godlike powers who united the warlords of the Empire against the Federation. Decades have passed, the Trifecta is shattered, the Dragon Emperor is dead, the Gatekeeper is missing and the Vipress alone sits on the throne at Sinigard. Peace reigns, yet the poppy remains. War orphan Fang Runin grew up with it. Her adoptive family smuggles it throughout Rooster Province, making a living on the misfortune of those addicted to its smoke. But when Rin's parents force her into an arranged marriage, Rin refuses to accept her fate and fights her way to the prestigious military academy at Syngard. There she will learn of drug fueled shamanic powers throughout the thought to be a myth, powers which might defeat the Federation during its third invasion, but the cost of some power is too great to pay, even if it means destroying a war that threatens to destroy, uh, winning a war that threatens to destroy an entire nation. Well, that definitely sounds different to the other books that I've been reading. Fantasy, although the other book I am fantasy. Yeah, I suppose maybe it's not as different because it's a, there's a lot in there about war. And let me tell you, there's a lot of war going on in um, uh, Dragonfly and Amber. And then the, oh, let's do the first, the first line. Starts with a map, which is always a plus for me, guys. Part one, chapter one. Take your clothes off. Rin blinked. What? The proctor glanced up from his booklet. Cheating prevention protocol. He gestured across the room to a female proctor. Go with her if you must. Okay, that was the first paragraph. Then we've got A House for Alice by Diana Evans, as I've said. So these are both books by 
authors that I have loved their other work. So here we go. After 50 years in the wilderness of London, Alice wants to live out her days in the land of her birth. Her children are divided whether she stays or going. In the wake of their father's death, she, the imagined stability of the family begins to fray. Meanwhile, youngest daughter Melissa has never let go of the love she lost, and Michael is in return. Even with the sturdy walls of his marriage to the sparkling Nicole, is haunted by the failed perfection of the past. As Alice's final decision draws closer, I'm smiling because this sounds a little bit similar in terms of like a friendship group and a relationship to Happy Place. So that's got war in it, like Dragonfly and Amber, and this has got um, friendship circles in it, like Happy Place. Um, as Alice's final decision draws closer, all that is hidden between Melissa and, her, Melissa and her sisters, Michael and Nicole, rise to the surface. Set against the shadows of Grenfell and a country in turmoil, these ordinary people uh, confront fundamental questions. How to raise our children, how to do right by our parents, and how, in the midst of everything, do we satisfy ourselves? Let's go for first chapter, uh, first paragraph. It's a long one, settle in. Cornelius Winston Pitt, in the evening of his life, eyebrows white and wild, eyesight dysfunctional, moved with a dancy small foot shuffle along his hallway, holding a pork pie. In the other hand was a cigarette, shedding ash onto his root, over the slip mat, into the kitchen, where, pausing, he became freshly alarmed at the absence of his wife, an absence he felt most strongly in this room, its floor still standing of her slippers, its toaster still evocative of her sadly buttered crusts. Where was she? Then he remembered. Kilburn. Was glad that he remembered. A whole crisp name. No chops anymore in this kitchen. No rice. Rice being extremely complex. No Sunday chicken. Here in this land of the late and alone, the menu was condensed. A pork pie was enough for a man. Only it needed... That's the end of the paragraph. Hmm. Oh, both of these are good, aren't they? I mean, I guess if I'm... Let's have a look at the page count. So that one's 342 pages, A House for Alice. God, she's really labouring over this, isn't she? This one's much longer, it's 530. So if I went for this, I've still got 13 hours to read but over today and tomorrow. There's every chance I could get this finished and then maybe pick up this or this. So if I want to go for, maybe, yeah, I think I'm gonna go for this. If I want to go for quantity, um, trying to get some of these books read before August to Christie starts. So yeah, I'm gonna go for A House for Alice. That paragraph, that first paragraph I did very much enjoy. And let's see how we get on. Got a really sore throat because I think because of all the dust I've been dust busting today. But yeah, the afternoon, well, it's 20 to four, so I can just sit here and read for a bit, especially as David is in the bath at the moment. Yeah, I'll check in a bit later, but we're gonna crack on with A House for Alice. I think this exact same thing happened last time, but my mum and dad came round and they were here for bloody ages. So we're still on 11 hours and 47 minutes. I'm getting a bit fatigued. <laughs> I think this is the sort of like, just before you get to halfway through, it gets a bit hard work. And although I'm not even quite halfway through the reading, I'm definitely halfway through the weekend, so it feels a bit impossible. But I've done it before, and I'm sure I'll do it again. Um, but anyway, so yeah. Um, it's five past six. Should we pick dinner, David? Yeah, sure. Pick dinner. Do you want dinner yet? I mean, I'm, I'm going to have some crisps. He's going to have some crisps. I'm starving. He's starving. Uh, and then maybe I'll have a little sit down and a read. And maybe listen to some more audiobook. I really would like to watch some like telly or something tonight rather than reading and listening all the time. Yeah. But I did have a good chat with my mum and dad about some decorating. So me and my dad are hoping to decorate three bedrooms come uh, three rooms come September, the lounge and the two bedrooms. Which would be lovely. And the wallpapers are really very delicious i do like the old pepsi max anyway da, 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 i've hit 12 hours which is good news isn't it david yeah very good so i've done 12 hours which means i'm halfway through now as i said although halfway through the reading i'm over halfway through the weekend so we do need to pick it up a bit but i am still determined to watch something maybe an episode of something tonight david yeah what have we got Though. Well, we. Oh, look at your. <laughs> You've not really got anything. <laughs> He's just bought himself out some little snacks and it's too cute. Show everybody your little <laughs> bowls of snacks. Well done. So, we are, in terms of episodes of stuff, I've still got one episode of Flatshare to watch. 
David won't really want to watch that on his Saturday night telly viewing. Well, he can do We've got one episode of Hijack, but that's not out until Wednesday. I can do a Sudoku. Obsessed with that. Um, and... <laughs> you dropped a crisp. Oh no, not on my lovely new clean. Oh. There it is, down there. And I dropped another one in the meantime. Yep, he's gone right under the sofa. Right, um, so... We yeah. could start a new series of something. Yeah, but then we've got to find that series, haven't we? That's always a slog. <laughs> that is a slog, but you could just take care of that while I'm reading. we just watch an episode. Anyway, I'm watching Tulsa. the reason we're here... Oh, is that what you're going to watch now? Mm -hmm. The reason we're here is to pick, a, pick an episode? No, pick a dinner to have for tonight. We use Gusto most weeks for dinners. Hashtag not spawn, but hashtag if you'd like an affiliate link, I can tell you that at the moment... If you use my affiliate link, which I will link down below, you get I get £20 and you get 65% off your first box and 20% off the first two months. When I first oh, did really? this, I know. When we first did it, we got 60%, 60% I think it was, off the first box and then 20% off the first month. So yeah, there we go. We use it most weeks. I'm vegetarian. David has to eat what I eat. That's not true, but like David eats <laughs> the vegetarian stuff because I don't eat meat at home. I have to suffer. So we often have delicious vegetarian meals yeah, from Gusto. Meals. What I like about Gusto more than I liked about HelloFresh is that there's loads more vegetarian options. When And I haven't had HelloFresh for a long time, but when I did, it was like four vegetarian options a week. So they have loads. I think it's like 40 plus vegetarian options a week. And also it's not all like fake meat because whilst, yeah, sure, I love fake meat. I can't, I shouldn't be having it really more than once a week. So, and actually none of these have got fake meat in. Three of them though are pasta. I can't so, remember the last time we had. It's... I said it's a bit processed. We, we, I was. Yeah, we, don't, we don't have it nowhere near as much as we used no, to. No, we used to have it a lot. Mm. Does tofu count as processed foods? I mean, if it is, then yes, we do have it a lot. <laughs> I think tofu would count. Like bread is. I mean, mm. let's find out. Is tofu mm. a Processed. We've just watched Mean Girls, can we? Food. When ingredients such as oil, sugar, or salt are added to food, and they are packaged, the result is processed food. <laughs> Examples are bread, cheese, tofu, canned tuna, or beans. They've not. Tuna. They have been altered, but not in a way that's detrimental to things. So there we go. Anyway, the options for tonight's dinner are. Broccoli pesto and pan grattato with fresh orioletti. Like I said, there's three pestos. And also another good thing is that some of these recipes only take 10 minutes and that is amazing. Then we've got plant-based cherry tomato and spinach gnocchi. This is a save and saver one. So some of them you get 50% off, uh, 50p off of the actual dish per person. So that's one of those ones. Then another 10 minute one, sun-dried tomato bean salad with sesame chili avocado. I mean, I want that, but David's not gonna want that for tonight. I can already put that to one side. Creamy tofu, yeah. pea and courgette tortiglione. We've had that before and it's lovely. Tofu and pasta, revelation. Spice paneer, French toast with cumin chips and mango mayo. Any of those tick in your boxes, David? God, that does look nice, that sandwich one, does it? Yeah. Should we have that one? If you want. Although we have got 28 pasta dishes. Maybe we should start with a pasta scene as we've got. But I mean, it doesn't matter. We're still going to have to have double pasta at some point, so. Yeah. Let's start with pasta though. Oh. I mean, we don't normally pick this many pastas and there's no rice ones in here. We normally always have a curry. I really do want that paneer toast one. No, we'll have that tomorrow. You can no. have that for lunch tomorrow, in fact. Oh, I would say that's probably a dinner. Um, broccoli one then. The broccoli orichetti, yeah. which only takes 10 minutes. So let me know when you're hungry. I'm well, hungry now. Well, you've just Stop got eating. yourself two little bowls of cutie, cutie treats. You don't want that now, do you? Nah, probably not. We'll have that a bit later on. So yeah, this is on the dinner. And as I said, I'll link me, me referral link down below if you'd like to use it because it literally puts food on mine and David's table. Literally. Anyway, I've got to go and do some more reading. I'm not even pausing my audiobook because I'm still reading, but just to tell you, Are they all lives in? I'm making dinner. Claire shrugged. In spite of the chilly air, she'd taken off the door was beginning to open. 
Thank you. Wow, it looks lovely. It does, doesn't it? Yum, yum, yum. I've just got to, I've just got to write down my uh, reading. No garlic bread. No garlic bread. Right. Have you got to tell you what you want to get to tonight? Mm. Like 16? 16 was the plan, but I don't, I mean, that's becoming more and more unlikely. You didn't say quarter past seven. Yeah, but that's... one. I know. Fun, isn't it? A bit much, isn't it? <laughs> anyway, we're going to watch the... 10 year anniversary. It originally aired in March. Goggle box episode. I like um, these pastas. Yeah, or a shetty, it's nice, isn't it? Hmm. And then I'll get straight back on the reading, so see you then. Hi. We watched a very fun episode of Goggle box. Well, it was the 10 year anniversary episode from earlier this year, but it was an hour and a half long, not an hour long as I first thought. Now, I'm going to have a little sort through. This is a almost, um, this was mainly David's clothes and he's been a good boy and already sorted his out. Um, so I'm going to have a little look through here and decide what I'm going to keep and what I'm going to either send back to storage or sell or donate. And then I'm going to fill this with jumpers and long sleeve dresses. It still feels mad that I'm doing this this late. Normally this is something I do in like April um, and it's, <laughs> well, it's August this week, isn't it? Um, so the fact that I'm doing this now feels a bit wild but um it needs doing and there might be a chance that i'll get to wear some of my summer clothes over august and maybe into september because then these get changed back come i'm just in something there that's definitely not summer that's a pleather skirt that's not a summer one that can go back straight away but anyway i've got 50 minutes left on my audio book um but i am listening to that on 1.5 and i'm just about to hit um, 13 hours so I'm gonna go until that's finished filling up and emptying and then I think I'll start getting ready for bed because it's five to nine um, and then I'll actually read in bed for a bit will I start my new audiobook today I mean I could I've got to take my nail varnish off as well but I might save that to do tomorrow after I've done a few chores yeah anyway that's what I'm gonna do so I'm gonna go and put my audiobook on Well, my wardrobe looks lovely and I've just finished the audiobook. So, that's me finishing Dragonfly and Amber. I've been sort of umming and ahhing throughout the listening to it of whether or not I'm going to carry on with the next series, uh, with the next book in the series, because the actual premise of it, a woman who can time travel between two time zones and there's also other people that have always also done that, and her sort of knowing, like, knowing a little bit and now she's... I mean, I can't really say anything without giving any spoilers. But then there's the, the flip side of that, and that's the romanticisation of um, hurting a partner, which, whether or not done via um, means of punishment or through means of trying to show someone you really love them. Like, uh, yeah, so I'm going to, as I did with Outlander and this, I think I'm going to put a bit of distance between the two books because I already, between the books so whether or not I actually go to the third book I already own the third book it's not on audio um I'll be reading it whether or not I get around to that this year or not we will see but second book finished and I've now read for 13 hours and 32 minutes it's half past nine David's watching Mean Girls oh my book's in the other room I think I'm going to do my review of um Dragonfly and Amber and then I'm going to pick up my other book. Whether or not I start the audiobook tonight, I mean, if it's quite gripping, do I want to start it? I mean, I've got nothing sort of to do that doesn't involve just sort of sitting. Um, I mean, I could do a bit, of, hmm, it's a bit late to do a bit of painting. I was thinking about doing a puzzle, but I've got a lovely Agatha Christie puzzle that I'm really looking forward to doing. So I don't want to puzzle myself out. Um, yeah, I think I'll, I'll do my review and then I think I'll get, yeah, I think I will start listening to it because then I'll start getting ready for bed and then I'll come to bed and read for a bit. But I'm a bit hot now, I've been marched up and down putting all my clothes away and stuff, so, yeah. Is this good progress? I think it is. I think being, I'm going to be over 14 hours, I mean it would be nice if I was over 15 hours. Um, 
which is well doable. I mean, I'm saying this now. I was like, I'm not tired, but I said that last night and then I was really tired. So let's see how it goes. But yeah, it'd be nice to get to over 15 hours. It'd be nice to get to 16 hours, but I don't think that's going to happen. Yeah, I am going to start my next audio book and here I am live starting it. She's got to find it first. Here we go. I'm going to... I was listening to the other one on 1.5. I'm going to bring that back down to... Well, let's start on a 1 and see if we want to up it to 1.25 later. How to Disappear by Gillian McAllister. Brought to you by Penguin. Brought to you by Penguin. Um, well, I've just read all evening in bed. I've read 116 pages of my new book. Listened to a little bit of my new audio book. Not much to report on the audio book because it's early days, but it's basically, I think, because it's like I say, it's early days, I think we're looking at some witness protection storyline here about uh, a mother and daughter who've gone into witness protection after the daughter witnesses a murder. The mother's called Lauren, but she has been in witness protection, she's known by another name. Um, and I can't show you because there's loads of other stuff on top of it. A House for Alice. I'm enjoying it a lot. To start off, it was it was reminding me a lot about of um, oh my god, what's that second Candice Carty Williams book called that I really really liked? I literally bought it for so many people for Christmas last year. Oh my god! I mean, forgive me, it's half eleven at night and I am quite tired. Give me a minute. I'm gonna get it. It's. Forty Williams, here we go. People person. It was reminding me a bit about people person because people person is a lot about um, a sort of father figure who links all of these characters that are in this book. And this book starts with the father figure of this family dying in a fire, which takes place on the same day as Grimfield. It isn't the Grimfield fire takes place so you, you're sort of hearing about all these people maybe it's just the way that it's pitched like you hear from that father you hear about that father figure first but yeah it was reminded me a lot about that I'm enjoying it I'm enjoying it it takes a bit of every time it starts a new chapter it sort of introduces a new character or and you have to sort of like try and work out what's going on for a long time there was a big long chapter about a character in Paris looking for his daughter and I was like, oh my god, I can't place this at all. But by the end of the chapter, it had got, it had got clearer. And um, it takes a bit of concentration, which I think is why I'm going to give up now. Look at me, just picking my nails. I'm only picking the colour off my nails, I'm not picking my natural nails. Um, but yeah, I think I'm going to go to sleep now. David, oh, David hasn't even got his headphones in. No. Are you just doing, enjoying a nice Sudoku? I'm always enjoying a Sudoku. Because I just laid on the bed and read for an hour and a half while David was in watching Mean Girls and... A little bit of greed. A little bit of greed. He came in and said to me, how's your night going? Because <laughs> we've been so separate. Which we don't do often, do we, at all? We're always in the same room. But yeah, I was just laying on the bed having a nice time. Cool, right. Well, I'll see you in the morning. And um, we've got about 8 hours 45 to read tomorrow. Was it 9 hours? No, 8 hours 45. That's not too bad. I think before when I've done this, I've gone into like the last day needed to do... 10 hours. So yeah, pretty good. Although I have got book club in the evening and I've got to take about an hour out of the day to um, do the questions for book club. I think I might do a few more chores tomorrow. So they seem to be quite good to do with when you've got the audio book going. And I need to pay my nails. So yeah, I'll see you in the morning. Say see you in the morning, David. See you in the morning. See you in the morning. Good morning. It's nine o'clock and I've already read for an hour and four minutes. Hurrah. So I woke up at quarter to, no, about 10 to eight. And um, I thought my eyes, I can't read yet. My eyes haven't adjusted. So I popped my audio book on <clears throat> and listened to that for about 15 minutes while I was just laying in bed with my eyes closed, which was lovely. I mean, the story itself is quite, like, it's not the most relaxing of stories, but I think that's what kept me sort of awake and like, oh yeah, listening. Um, and then I've just done 10 minutes reading of 
a house for Alice. David's made me a cup of tea. Can I finish my cup of tea? And then go and have some breakfast. Eat the breakfast whilst reading. Then get up, do a bit more cleaning. I don't do this much cleaning normally, but it's very easy to do cleaning whilst listening to the audiobook. And I'm keen to listen to more of the audiobook. Um, but yeah, the audiobook itself, How to Disappear by Gillian McAllister. It's about a young girl who witnesses a murder of a homeless man. Um, and the people who do the murder are two uh, lads from the local football team. And um, off the back of what she sees, she goes to court and it turns out that what she's originally told the police isn't quite what happened. And from the back of that, a lot of angry men who support the local football team now want to kill her or punish her. Um, and it's gripping. I'm really into it. Very into it. And um, I'll continue to be into it. But like I said, I've got a nice cup of tea in my Norway mug that I bought when I was on my honeymoon. We've got this one in blue and David's got a yellow one. Um, and yeah, I'm going to read a little bit more. Breakfast, clean, put some clothes on around lunchtime. David is going to go to the cinema today, he thinks. And then <clears throat> I've got book club today. I've also got to film my reading wrap up. I forgot I've got to do that too. So I've got to fit a video, filming it, a video in at some point as well. So yeah, but I'm going to crack on with all that. I've now added an extra column to because I've been I've been doing it on my phone but also on here and I've got seven hours and forty four minutes left to read by the end of the day, which is very, very achievable. I'm very pleased with myself because if I was just to start now, like I said, it's just gone nine. So that would mean one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So if I was to non stop now, I'd be finished at quarter to six. So it's completely achievable. But I just need to get on with it, really. So I'm going to get on with it now. Oh, I need to write down what time I'm starting. And read a, more of A House for Alice. Go. 9.02. Well, it's going well. It's 11 o'clock. I've done the office. I'm about to start on the, uh, on the ensuite. And um, I've got to just over 18 hours. So I've got five hours 58 to go and it's only 11 o'clock i'm very into the audiobook it's very gripping they're about to go into witness protection and um yeah i think i'm just gonna crack on i mean maybe i could stop cleaning at midday and um get changed and then start thinking about filming and stuff like that but yeah, it's going well. I'm pleased with myself. Got me shark. I've literally just cleaned non-stop for two hours. Um, my shower in my ensuite looks, as I said, I've, I've never been one for cleaning and I've really got into it recently purely because of an app called Sweepy. I'm gonna make a whole video about it and how much I'm into it now. But um, if you want pre-hype for that video, go and check out the app Sweepy because it's really helped out. Um, and yeah, so I'm, I've now read for 20 hours and two minutes. I am almost halfway through my audiobook. I am gripped by it. And it sort of bodes well, really, because um, in August, so by the time you're watching this video, I'm gonna be reading all Agatha Christie books and, and books inspired by her and stuff like that. So yeah, this is a good sort of segue into that because I am invested in this mystery and I wanna know where it's going and what's gonna happen. Um, David's just gotten to take some stuff to the charity shop and he's getting us a burger king for lunch, which I'm very excited about. Um, so I'm going to wait for him to get back. I'm going to actually read some of my book 
because I haven't read any because I've just been listening to the audiobook for two hours. Um, so I'm gonna have a little read while I'm waiting for him to get back of A House for Alice by Diana Evans, which I am also enjoying. I wonder if I've got roughly four hours left to go and I've got two, and I've got, I'm almost halfway through, I'd probably say I'm about half, but like I'm 43% through the audiobook and I'm probably about 43% through this book as well. Will I get one of them finished by the end of today in four hours? Maybe not, but I'll have a bloody good time enjoying it. The battery's flashing, so I'm gonna get on with reading and check in with you once the Burger King has been consumed and I'm dressed and ready to get on with the day. Proper, proper. I'm clean. She's brushed her hair and she's ready to record. Well, I've just got to go back what I do before I film my wrap ups. I've read for 21 hours and three minutes, by the way, if you're wondering, which means I've only got Oh God, two hours and 57 minutes left. Go me. <laughs> um, before I film my reading wrap up, I've read 16 books this month. Well, I've read 14. Let me just double check that actually. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. But I'm also gonna wrap up the two that I'm reading in this vlog because there is a high chance that they're gonna get done today or tomorrow and I'd like that to be wrapped up so i'm going to wrap up just using the information i have on them so far um so yeah 16 books but before i do that i normally go back through my instagram highlights because i review every book um that i read on there so if you don't follow me on instagram head on over there at lauren and the books and then all of my highlights down here july reads i'm going to go through there and read my reviews some of the first book is malibu rising which is here so just going to go through read all of that and then record and then edit and then pop it up and then i'll do my questions for book club because yeah i'm doing quite well less than three hours to go pleased for me right okay let's revise what i've read what did you just say to me david julia roberts is dead not actual julia roberts julia roberts in steel magnolias it is the most autumnal day ever here today. It's absolutely chucking it down outside. It's nice, actually. <laughs> so, and I've filmed my video, edited my video, done my questions for book club tonight, put up a reminder about book club tonight, picked out the next two books for September's book club, or pick the theme at least, and I'm just uploading my video. It's 29 minutes left, so, and, on top of all of that, I've listened to loads more audiobook and they've read a little bit more of um, A House for Alice and I've got less than two hours left to read and it's only seven minutes past five. Hmm, very pleased with myself. So I've got one hour and 59 minutes uh, until I complete my 24 hour reading challenge. I'm really pleased with myself. It's not done yet, it's not a done deal yet, but I could definitely get another hour in before book club. Um, so I think I'm gonna do that. I can't stop eating, David. I'm I can't stop reading because I'm reading, but just to say I've got nuts and this ginger drink that I got free from a food festival a couple of weekends ago. What are you doing, David? Do you wanna show your little drink? How many nuts have you got? No, there's crisps underneath those nuts. <laughs> oh wow, that's a lot. That's a lot. There's not many nuts. Okay. Oh, I'm happy because I've only got 54 minutes left and look at my husband's lovely legs. Faceless he is, just legs. Um, yeah, I've been doing really well. So I've just sat and listened to more audiobook, had a little more read. Um, it's now quarter past six and book club starts at quarter to seven. So I'm gonna go and have a wee and make a cup of tea and get myself ready for book club um, and listen to a little bit more audiobook while that's going on. But yeah, this should be a done deal. What do you wanna do to celebrate, David? What? What, do you, what do you want to do tonight after book club to celebrate? Watch more Impossible? Uh, yeah, probably. <laughs> We've been watching Impossible on iPlayer, which is a... Well, uh, one episode. One episode. We, we caught an episode of it while we were on our cruise. What's this I've just found in my back, in my pocket, a tissue. Um, while we were on the cruise, it's like, because we're very much missing House of Games, but it is back in September, so not long to wait now. Um, but yeah, maybe we'll do that. David's already watched one film today. Do you still love that film, even though it's not new to you? I I, I put it on my letterbox, but I like, obviously, obviously it's not a new film, so it doesn't count. Can people follow you on letterbox if they'd like to, David? Yeah, I think I'm What's just your name? Beardy David, like I am on everything. Beardy David. Uh, by the way, your face isn't in this, it's just legs. Nice. Like you're uh, an, obje David. an object of my desire. Yeah. 
Right, okay, I'm gonna go and do a little dance, which is quite cute, isn't it? Right, okay, so I'll see you after book club. <laughs> Flicky legs over there. Book club finished. It was a high scorer, guys. It was the light years, and it scored four on our league table, which was second from the top. I've had to write out a new league table. Um, but yeah, I'm very much looking forward to continuing with the series of which I have ready here to go. So although not next month, I'll be starting after that. So yeah, I've got 37 more minutes of reading to do. David's gonna go and make some din-dins in a minute. Um, and I think I'll just get, I'll blast through those 37 minutes. Shall I now, David, or do you want help making dinner? I think he's got his headphones in. He's not, he's not just being, ignoring me. Do you want me to help you with dinner, David? No, that's right, I can go do it. You sure? Yep. I've got 37 more minutes to finish and I'm looking forward to it. This one's been all right. Like I've managed to get it all done. I wasn't sure that I would. But anyway, let's continue. So I'll listen to a bit more audio book while I'm tidying all this mess up and then I'll finish by actually reading the book. So off we go. Off we go, off we go, off we go. 37 more minutes to go. And audio book. I've got three minutes left. Well, actually, I've got two minutes 15 left. Let's read a chapter, a, a chapter, a paragraph, and see how we're doing. All this was going through his mind as he was giving Lyle and his friends dap. Three, two, one. <laughs> I've done it. Oh, I've done it. I'm sorry, Afif, from David. <laughs> I get to spend the... Oh, let me stop. Stop! 24 hours and nine seconds in the course of a weekend reading. And what did I read? I listened to, honestly, I think it was 21 hours. I, I sped it up. I think it was 17. It might have been 21 hours of, an, of um, Dragonfly and Amber. I read the whole of happy place i've read 200 pages of a house for alice and i've listened to let's have a look nine hours 42 again a bit sped up of how to disappear by Gillian mcallister what a weekend very much enjoyed it didn't enjoy leaving my husband alone but now i've got a lovely dinner and i can completely dedicate my evening to him hopefully you've enjoyed watching me read for 24 hours in one weekend have you ever done anything like this let me know down below um and i'll see you all again soon for another week two video goodbye